The story of punk really begins with Iggy Pop. He was authentic. That's the problem with rock and roll, that there's not many really authentic madmen in it. I hated school. I hated uh, being confined in office clothes. I hated uh, the guys in the fraternities around the college campus where I lived. I just hated the whole, I hated the whole American dream. I am the passenger. Iggy took the whole ethos of the beat writer and made it applicable to modern music. People would lay him side by side with Jim Morrison. I don't think that's quite fair because I think Morrison came from much more of a European mentality where Iggy was so totally American, so totally Midwest. Did the music uh, of Detroit have much of an effect on your music? The, uh, the industrialism in Detroit, the what I heard yeah. You know, wandering around is <laughs> there are ten cars and so on. So sure. I get a lot of my influence, like from the electric shavers, and uh, <laughs> it's true. You, you really, no, but it's funny how the sound. You don't realize how the sound. Is. <laughs> what did you do to those nice people out there? Iggy walked on people's hands. Iggy grabbed people out of the audience. Suffice it to say that Iggy was a lot more dangerous than Jim Morrison, who was, might be waving his penis around on. Uh, on stage in Miami, Iggy, you know, you thought that he might take the whole crowd with him. Get into the car. We'll I wanted to have my stuff presented in a much more shocking way than the next fellow because, because the next fellow was usually better looking than me. He could sing better and they could get a better gig for more money, but the reason they could is because they would imitate the five most popular English bands at the time. Remember. It was obvious to me that person that could create something really of their own, that was the person that was going to have the key. Do you feel you've influenced anybody? I think I helped wipe out the 60s. <laughs>